In this video, we are going to cover the best and the worst running shoes of 2022, starting with the worst shoe first. But before we do that, some disclosures. I am not sponsored by the Hyatt Place. I'm just traveling for work. Number two, nobody sent me any running shoes. No one ever sends me running shoes. Nobody likes me. Nobody cares what I think about running shoes. And I try not to take that personal. I'm just a Jagwarsp. I'm just a guy with a running shoe problem. So let's get to the worst shoe already. I don't like to do worst shoe categories. I don't, I don't like to be negative. In fact, my strength finder 2.0 number one strength is positivity. It's just, if you take a dump in a box and try to sell it to me for $170, I'm gonna send it back to the chef. Actually, I sent it to this guy. He follows me on Instagram. One day he slid into my DM speaking Portuguese and when I Google translated it, it said, send me your Takumi Sen 8, please. To which I respectfully say, fuck off, right? And not to be an ass ad, it's just, you know, I know my Brazilian friend has a bigger foot than mine. I could barely fit my foot in the Takumi Sen 8. So instead, I send him the Reebok Float Ride Energy X, the worst shoe of the year. It's the worst shoe for three reasons. One, there is absolutely nothing special about this shoe. Nothing, okay? This is like a, it's like a Pegasus. It's like a, one of the Mario brothers, it's namely Mario. It's like eating mashed potatoes, but without butter. This shoe drives the speed limit. There's nothing special. It's not snappy, not responsive. It's not cushion. It's not lightweight. It's somehow more average than Reebok's average running shoe, the Float Ride Energy. It's five foot nine. It bats seventh in the lineup. It is a men's US size nine. It is certainly not a nine and a half or an eight and a half because this shoe does not come in half sizes. In the year of our Lord, 2022, a running shoe company has released a shoe without half sizes. I believe that is sizest. Not only that, icing on the cake, I order my size nine and it fits like a nine and a half. Deceased. The third reason it's on my shit list is because Reebok charged $170 for the shoe. Now they always have sales, so I got it for 110, but I did spend an additional $50 sending it to Brazil, only to find out that the shoe never showed up. I am drowning in the irony, and I know he was disappointed, but I think he would have been more disappointed had the shoe actually shown up and he ran in it. On to the best shoes, on to Cincinnati. All right, I'm gonna do my top three daily trainers. My number one's kind of a surprise, so stick around for that. But at number three and number two, we've got the Sockney Endorphin Speed 3 and the Nova Blast 3. And I'm gonna do a little battle head-to-head -head here. I'm gonna break it down really quick. Outsoles, midsoles, uppers, let's go. Uppers, slight edge, Endorphin Speed 3, but subtle, you really can't tell. They're both decent. Outsoles, they're both subpar, but you know, I would still give the slight edge to the Speed 3. I have ran in rain with both of these. I did not feel confident in my footing in either one of these shoes. They really both shine on the midsoles. They're bouncy. They, I do feel them differently underfoot. I do feel like the Nova Blast 3 is all centered underneath my foot, which then causes, you know, like m per my particular stride and my lack of uh, internal external hip rotation, I kind of land on the outer portion here. And so it rolls into the front where I feel a more flat landing here, which I prefer. I prefer to run in the shoe. So I would put these shoes as like a tie, but I don't like ties. So I'm going to say at number three is the Sockney Endorphin Speed 3. Because if I had to sum this up with one line, I would say that the Speed 3 became more, you know, more like a daily trainer from previous iterations in almost every single way, except for the price point. 170 bucks. So most daily trainers range from you know, 120 to 140, and that's where the Nova Blast 3 sits. And so I would choose this over this. So I'm putting this as number three, and this is number two. And for my number one daily trainer of the year, the New Balance SC Trainer. Okay, Linda, listen to me, Linda, listen. I understand that this is probably not gonna be on a lot of people's daily trainer category. They might be on their max cushion category or easy day shoe. And I get that, I understand. People just wanna use it for that. But for me, what this shoe feels like when I run in it 
is like the Nike Invincible meets the Nova Blast One. It's got all that bounce of the Invincible and this uh, D, uh, the energy arc reminds me of the decoupled groove of the Nova Blast One, and I really feel it propelling me forward. So like when I run in it, it's hard for me to run easy. When I land on the midfoot, I feel myself going into kind of a steezy run. It just wants me to pick up the pace a little bit. Now, a drawback of the shoe is that it is a little bit heavier, but not as heavy as you think. Well, at least not as heavy as I thought it was going to be when I picked up the pace. I found that energy return coming back strong all the way up to tempo pace. And when I say that, like 20 minute tempo or 30 minute tempo, towards the end it got really challenging. So I'm not gonna run a 15K in here, not just cause I don't really run 15Ks, but I wouldn't run a 15K in this shoe, but you can there. The pace that this shoe shines is the marathon pace. Just locks in, energy return, is pushing me forward. It's like running the miles for me. It reminds me of the Alpha Fly. In fact, I would use this shoe as the Alpha Fly training companion. They just both work in the same sort of use case. They feel about the same. The upper even, I don't know if it's because my Alpha Fly was, you know, a mango color as well, but it's just like all one piece. I know it's different materials, but they just remind me. So what the tempo next percent was, the training companion, I feel like this what this is for me. Now the only pace that I would not take this shoe in is 5K and 10K paces, because if I'm gonna take a shoe out for that, it would be my shoe of the year, the Takumi Sen 8. I'm not gonna do a full review here, because I've already done one with a 400 meter challenge, and I'll put it right here, I'll put it right here, the description below, I'll figure it out later. It's the best shoe, please. Let me know what your top three shoes are in the comments below, and support your fellow runners but with the like and the sub and all that stuff. I appreciate you watching from uh, the Hyatt. If you are gonna be staying somewhere, just kidding, this is not a paid promotion. I'm done.